Greetings everyone, Joseph James here with your nightly newsletter brought to you by the theschooloftrade.com. Today was June 30th, 2009, finishing up the end of a quarter, a very busy quarter, a very busy month. We had uh, OPEX week, was it last week, week before last? Uh, so it seems like, boy, this summer is setting in fast on us guys, isn't it? End of June, again, well, we'll show you guys what, what happened. Before we get started with our live trade room results, 262 today. We went five for six. Now, of course, usually when we go five for six, we're usually going to see much bigger profit than that, and we'll show you guys why a little bit later on in this video. Uh, today was one of those days where, boy, we had to earn our paycheck, didn't we, guys? Took a lot of small winning scratch trades, some you know first target scratches. Uh, took a stop loss today, okay, and that stop was on the DAX. We'll show you guys in a bit. Anyways, 262 uh, coming in today brings our weekly total at 1037 1037 USD 2 days of trading 1000 bucks that's exactly where we want to be for every 3 contracts remember guys this is a 3 contract account here nothing out of the ordinary and of course that brings our monthly total for June just shy of 16000 which seems to be a pretty big uh, uh or pretty consistent average for us uh in our monthly returns for 3 contracts let's talk about our term of the day stop placement now we've already talked about a stop strategy so we know what your stop strategies need to be. But what about stop placement? This can be often the first thing you guys learn is using an initial hard stop or a hard money stop. In other words, your stop placement has to do with your initial stop loss that protects your position. Everyone should always use a stop. Guys, no matter how big or small you're trading, how much experience you've got, no matter which market you're trading, always use an initial stop. And of course, when it comes to stop placement, the small details, well, they add up to big results, right? Trading, a lot like life, is a game of inches. We, we grab ticks whenever we can get them, and those small ticks here and there, boy, they add up to big results. And of course, your stop placement, depending on how it's placed, depending on if you have the mechanical rules to follow in order to manage that stop, those small discrepancies can mean big winning results or big losing results. Now, ultimately, we can place our stop three basic ways. The first is going to be according to your maximum risk per trade. So if you have identified, which of course we do for our members, what your max risk is per trade. This may have this may be according to your uh, to your broker's rules, right? Depending on how much money you have in your account. Maybe according to your own personal risk tolerance. In other words, uh, you know, we have traders that have large trade accounts, but they still cannot stomach uh, you know, a 10-point loss on the Dow. So it can be a very difficult thing emotionally for you if you have a, a low risk tolerance personally. Okay, so the max risk per trade can be a set number, a dollar amount, a tick number. We can also use the extreme or the opposite of the previous candle. So for example, for a long trade, our initial stop placement can be the previous low of the recent candle. In other words, the third way to place it would be using recent swing highs and swing lows. Now, we've also talked about swing highs and swing lows in previous videos as well. So you guys should be aware of what a swing high and swing low is. But using those swing highs and swing lows, for example, if we took a long trade, we would place our initial stop below the most recent swing low. The opposite would be true for a short trade. Your initial stop placement would be a couple ticks above the most recent swing high. As you guys can see, your stop placement, really three basic rules for placing your stop. You can either use your own personal risk tolerance based upon your own account. You can use the extreme of the previous candlestick, or you can use recent swing highs and swing lows. Now, this stop placement should be mechanical or automatic. In other words, you should not have uh, the opportunity to think about this stuff. Right? Human beings, we're not computers, we have emotions. And when, we, when we're left with the task of thinking about where to place your stop, or having the uh, ability to interpret the market, especially as a new trader, this can be a very dangerous combination because when those emotions get involved, we oftentimes will push our stops out a little bit further than we'd like to see. And by pushing those stops out, you guys all know what happens. It puts us in tremendously large risk positions. Uh, it oftentimes will eventually uh, you know, result in blowing out your account. And it's not good for your overall mental confidence in taking your trades, right? Big stops are not going to help you become a better trader. So these need to be mechanical and automatic. Now, these stop placements, they can be market specific. 
So for example, a specific market such as the S&P will have a different stop placement than a market like the DAX or the Euro. So this can be market specific. So each individual market will have a different strategy for where to place your stop. Now inside of each market, you may have specific market conditions, such as a high volume day, a low volume day, a trending day, or a sideways day, where you may want to, of course, make small changes in your initial stop placement. This can also be trader specific, uh, specific excuse me, like we said earlier, right? Some specific traders have low tolerance to risk, no matter what the market's like no matter what their trade account looks like or what their brokers want them to do. They have plenty of money in their account. They just have a low tolerance for risk on each trade, so they choose to have a tighter stop. You can also see traders which will use uh, a stop placement technique to protect profits. For example, if you are up on the day by a couple hundred bucks and you want to limit the exposure uh, to losing that money, giving it back to the market, you may want to tighten your stop up, have your initial stop placement a little bit smaller. And of course, it can also be used to limit risk to a specific situation, such as an FOMC day or a major news announcement like a, a news report such as jobs or a CPI or home sales. If you're trading in and around those news events, there's going to be a lot of whipping in price, right? a lot of volatile, impulsive price action, which could cause you to want to limit your risk to a specific situation like that. Guys, come join us tomorrow morning in our live trade room. It opens up at 2.45 a.m. We'll trade the euro and the U.S. sessions. And, of course, we'll show you guys how we use our stop placement strategies. That live trade room opens up at 2.45. It's available for trial members and lifetime members. We're going to trade the European session and the U.S. morning session. We'll finish up at about 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We have three jobs. We open the room. Job number one is to identify the news events and the type of market we see. Job number two is then to adjust to what we've now identified. So we'll adjust to the news and we'll adjust to our market today by marking up our support and resistance levels and defining those trade zones. Now job number three becomes very easy when we do our jobs one and two correctly. We use patience and discipline to wait for the perfect trading opportunities and then we execute our trades. And we always remind you guys to stop thinking so much and let our mechanical rules do the trading for you. Let's talk about some of the trades we saw today. Now today, again, another one of those very difficult days. We really earned our paycheck today. The DAX continued its light, choppy price action. Although it gave us a bunch of good moves, we really, again, had a hard time with the confidence getting in and staying in these trades. Remember, guys, with no conviction, light price action, not only can our entries be a little more difficult because we rely on price action to make those entry decisions, but staying in the trade, right? Our specific rules tell us exactly what to do when we see things like the volume drying up. And we saw that a lot yesterday and today ahead of this 4th of July holiday. Now, the first trade of the day, again, winning trade. We like to start off the DAX early in the morning, make a nice quick trade, get us off on a right foot. 26 minutes past the hour, 326. This is a wave short. 90 even was our entry. We took 3, 6, and 2 on our runner here total of 11 points. Now at 35 bucks a point, right? that's USD of course, you can see these are going to add up pretty quickly. It wasn't long thereafter, 18 minutes past 4, a two step short, 81 even plus 2 and plus 4 on this move, but however price action was so sloppy here, didn't get any fill, at least we had our rules in place and we didn't go chasing after this price, very difficult to get into that position. And of course we ended up giving the money right back to the market, 723 this morning, a wave short here, perfect price pattern. I mean, this was almost as picture perfect as these wave patterns get for us, guys. And we, I think we all got caught off guard by this price not moving for us. Stopped out five point stop, three contracts, total of 15 points. So we took 11 points in the opening trade, gave back 15 points, and we were down four points going into the European lunch at six o'clock. We came out of that lunch though, got our money back, made those three points back, 10.09 this morning, Okay, this is a two-step long at 61. We took profit at three, got scratched out for our three points, and then 10.52 this morning, same thing. Two-step long at 08 even. This is a scratch trade. Price didn't go anywhere, and we got out a little bit early, guys. All right, let's wrap it up with the euro. The euro gave us another couple great times today. 9.15, wave short, 66 even. We took four and eight for a total of 12 ticks. And at 10.30 this morning, this is a two-step long at 27 took a profit of three, and then scratched out for a total of three ticks. Once again, guys, my name is Joseph James. I'm the developer of the James Wave Method of Trading. Hope the video helps. We'll see you next time, guys, and make sure to come out and join us. Thursday and Friday this week, we're closed for holiday, but we'll be back open Monday morning, 
and tomorrow morning. So come join us in the live trade room. We'll see you then.